All right, so if you can already play the notes of every roll on every chord and you've practiced through the circle of fifths, you are in great shape. Um, so now we're just going to talk about where in the measure you can put this thing. And the roll is a really convenient phrase because it's four notes long. And a lot of jazz soloing is uh, built on the idea of either starting on the beat and ending um, off the beat. So like starting on a number, a one, a two, a three, or a four, and then ending on an and, or the other way around, starting on an and and landing on a beat. So that is a uh, really, really rough definition of syncopation. Um, but uh, it, it's just not starting on a beat and ending on a beat. That usually sounds kind of dorky, especially if that's all you do. But it's a four note phrase. So if we just play it as eighth notes, uh, then we're going to end up landing. For example, if we start on a one, we land on an and at the end of the phrase. So this roll works literally on any partial beat any one or two or three or four or any of the ands so this first one right here would be like one two three four one and two and or if you're playing it starting on the three which makes sense if you're at this point in the lesson i'm not going to lose you to go one two three four one and two and even those those are not the notes that are written here so this is just demonstrating that you can start on a one and end on an and or if you start on the and of one, you would end on the three. One, two, three, four, one, and two, and three. Or starting on the two. One, two, three, four, one, two, and three, and. And then you can start on the and of the three, or the and of the two. One, one, two, and three, and four. Or you can start on the three. One, two, three, and four, and. Most of our idioms are not this way. The role is extremely versatile. So in the later lessons, when we talk about the rhythms, you're not going to be able to just start wherever you want. But for the role, just know that pretty much anywhere you start, as long as you play eighth notes, you're going to wind up OK. One, two, three, and four, and one. Or the next one, one, two, three, four, and one, and. Or the last one, one, two, three, four, and one, and two. Okay, so now, of course, the the rolled, like we talked about before, like yeah or uh-huh or uh, yep or any of these really short, short, short phrases that aren't even really phrases, this is almost always, always decorated with something at the beginning or at the end. So these rhythms here are the beginning rhythms of something else. So, for example, on this, this and right here, you might have a phrase that starts one, two three four and one and two and three and four and have other stuff that you're gonna play afterwards those are all the decorations that we're not going to get into now but first we just want to talk about all the rhythms for just the roll and then later talk about how to decorate them so that's all just using straight eighths swung eighths but using all eighth notes there then we can talk about how to uh incorporate this when we've got triplets when we want to take a set of the, the last three notes so we have four notes one two three four and we take the last three notes and turn it into a triplet so we could do that as long as we start on an and so we could go um one and two and then turn these into a triplet so you different people say different things for this triplet is a fine one to use here so one and triple let and again you probably have something else after that but uh starting it on an and if you're going to use a triplet for the last three notes is important you don't want to start the beginning on a number that puts your triplet on the and and that's really really awkward and not idiomatic at all so starting on the and of any of these uh i'll go ahead and show you the rest of these so it'd be one the second one right here is one two and triple let this next one would be the and of three so one two three and triple let or this last one here would be one two three four and triple let okay so then that's all of our uh triplified versions of this and you want to go through of course the exercises try this not just on the c chord and uh not just on one of the beats but try those on 
as many of the beats as your attention span uh, and your abilities can handle uh, through as many chords as possible um, and as many different rhythms as possible. So you really use those those play along tracks and uh, the appendices if you need this all written out to go through your circle of fifths and really get this stuff just so much into your hand that your hand just wants to do it on it so you don't have to think about oh no i've got a c major seven chord coming up i could i could play a roll right here and a triplified version of the roll starting on the on the three i'm gonna start on the end of the two what by the time you've got your brain has gone through that stuff you're already way 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 past that c major seven that you were planning on doing something cool for so you want this to just be an automatic response to you seeing a a chord symbol and your hand having something to do more importantly, and I can't stress this enough, more importantly that you've played that so many times and your ear has heard your hand do it, that it becomes a part of the vocabulary in your ear. That's the whole point of all of this is not that you've got something cool to do in your hand, but that your hand is able to do the cool things that your hand has trained your ear to hear. Once again, you've played it so many times your hand that your ear anticipates it you see the chord uh, or you hear the chord coming up and your ear goes you know what would be really cool here is ba -da -ba -da, and your hand has done it so many times your hand knows what to do really what's happened is your hand has trained your ear to hear that thing and then when your ear goes oh let's do that one thing your hand goes yeah no problem i'm the one that taught you that in the first so next on our set of rhythms is um, other rhythmic variations you can try out your own here are some that um, dr gilman has approved uh, to be like, yeah, these are things that you could do. So uh, it doesn't have to be all eighth notes or all triplets. You could, if you want, put the first one on beat one and then the second one on beat two and then play eighth notes for the last ones. So one and two and three and so one, two, three, four, one, two, three, and that could be a thing or to put them all as uh, 16th notes. One E and a two E and one, one E and a two, three, four uh, could be a thing. Of course, you'd ha probably have something right before that or right after. You wouldn't just have that phrase by itself, but that would be something to practice. And then you could also split it up, putting a little rest in the middle on beat two, which would be one and two and three and. And then we've given you some staffs down here to uh, try out some of your own. This just experiment with these notes and different rhythms now that you have some ideas of things you could do with it and uh, you can either just try them out and see if you like them and decide on your own whether you want to use those rhythms or practice those rhythm rhythms or you can send them in and say how about this thing does this sound like something that a jazz player would uh, play and we can you know mess around with those kinds of uh, ideas and your own your own creations there the next things to do are probably to run through the exercises that will give you the chance to incorporate all these rhythms and all the different inversions of the chords we talked about. Again, the role has so much more to practice because it's used in so many different contexts that the other idioms are going to be a lot more specific. Oh yeah, when you have this kind of chord, this idiom is gonna fit in. But the role, because it's just so ubiquitous, you really want to be fluent in all situations here. So uh, we're gonna talk about exercises that you can do that uh, are just all based on a single chord, just the root of C, what can you do on the root of C? And then we've got some real world exercises. Let's get into those.